Hey everybody, welcome back to Five Boys in a Business, a podcast where we talk about the business, the family, and the many shenanigans involved. You can find us most Mondays. We used to say 1030, but it seems like it's been closer <laughs> a little bit to later. 11. Hey, time changed. <laughs> 11. Um, I've been saying 1030 for a while, and after the past five or six podcasts, it seems to be later and later due to it being a Monday and rolling in and then uh, doing a lot of things. Anyway, side note. Right. Okay, so you can catch us most Mondays somewhere probably around 11 moving forward um, in any of the podcast uh, stations or channels. So iTunes, Spotify. Google Podcasts. Google Podcasts. So um, Tony Katz mentioned a new one that we should be moving to. What? Uh, I can't remember the name of it now. Ramble. Ramble. Harrison Branch. Oh, Have Rumble. You heard of Ramble? No, Rumble. Rumble. Okay, so... Maybe we'll be found on a rumble. I have a little get um, ready to rumble. I have a, okay. a little um, kind of a side note there. Parlor with all this stuff going. Oh on yeah, Twitter. parlor, parlay. I think it's supposed to be parlay. said like a parlay um, or something. They are the number. They were the number one downloaded app above TikTok. Yep, that. And then we're also supposed to be moving away from Facebook and to. Gab, there's a bunch Mil-bee of different Milby wee, Milby, Mi wee, or something. Yeah, Mi wee. Okay, so Gab. there's all that information just in a nutshell. Yeah. Don't forget to check out the merch store at ASVCmerch.com. I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. And we are here for another episode. We are. I want to give a special shout out to a client that I had the pleasure of meeting the other day. I was walking in from getting the mail and I met Becky, who is uh, the owner of Keebler. Keebler, Keebler the dog. And, yeah, as soon uh, as Richie told me nice. that, yeah, I was like, that's Keebler's mom. Yeah, so I want to give a <laughs> shout out. She let me know that uh, she, uh, her husband, Rick, and I share a birthday. So, one more reason to be happy and thankful for the month of October. So Absolutely. shout out to Becky and Rick. Keebler's like over 15 now. So, oh, wow. um, and Cindy and I, who work rooms with me, um, Becky knows Cindy for, gosh, the whole length of time Keebler's been around. Um, and we love their voicemails. So oh, cool. their voicemail message, their voice message system. Because oh, awesome. she would say, it's Keebler's Castle. <laughs> and so Cindy and I would just love to call and hope that Becky wasn't there. Not because we didn't want to talk to her, but so we could hear the, message. Hear the message. That's cool. So That's awesome. anyway, it's yeah, a little shout story out to there. Those two. So awesome, awesome. Thanks for being clients. So. A uh, big, you know, uh, big weekend. Uh, weekends are always fun at our house, but uh, we especially enjoyed the warm weather uh, yesterday and uh, able to get out. And hence why I'm wearing shorts in November because it's hot outside. So unseasonably warm, a bit of a tease. We're going to pay for it at the end of this month. I'm sure next month and until next April we'll pay for it. So I am sure. Uh, but, yeah, uh, everything's nice outside, and uh, it's awesome. Can't complain. We haven't done the podcast since because we had to drop podcast last week since yep. Halloween. <clears throat> Halloween went great. Mm -hmm. A little light on the visitors. I didn't have to throw candy at any kids. I think we had more parents come <laughs> over and talk to us about our solo stove. We had burning up front that had kids. We did. We had, yeah, we had the solo stove going. Hats off to and solo stove, though. Their marketing it must be awesome because I first heard about them on Facebook and went to their site and liked their product and bought a stove, I bought two stoves. And um, I have the 30 inch Yukon model. And it's interesting because a lot of people came up to us and go, hey, is that a solo stove? Yeah. I was like, yeah, it is a solo stove. Yeah. So it's cool. This, it, it, the stove, the design is such that um, it minimizes smoke. So there's not a lot of smoke uh, the way it's vented. I don't yeah. know how they do it, but it, sh it works. For sure. I'd like works. to preface this by saying this is not an actual stove, everybody. This is a fire pit. Oh, oh fire, pit. fire pit. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Harrison, on my Instagram page, I think there's a picture of dad in front of the solo stove, isn't there? Did I do a pay picture? You have to check it out and see. Oh, uh, for Halloween? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Think I probably. took your picture. Yeah, you did. And said something on there. Yeah. But it's uh, cool. But we could show everybody a picture of it. So, yeah, but this Halloween, we usually go through several bags. We put our big um, bowl of candy out and might have gone through half of it. Yeah. Maybe. And that was toward the end when I was like, take as much as you want. Yeah. There's dad in front of the solo stove. That's it. There you go. Look at that fire and no smoke. Look at that. You can actually see me behind the stove. Very cool. There you go. It's awesome. Yeah, we're in love with that thing. Yeah, but we had a few people come over and uh, check it out, and it was fun. I mean, it actually, the, the night ended off early, too. There was very few kids out past 730. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, we we're glad that those that wanted to come out did. And, and yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Anyway. I could make light of the way we just put a thing out there and said, take, you know, whatever you want. But some people went to extraordinary <laughs> lengths it's in okay. terms of safety. It makes people feel better. And that's what matters. Some people even suggested you put a PVC shoot out of your front door to uh, give candy. So anyway, some people got full bars and everything. Yeah. Some people got jackpot, man. Yeah. 
I remember when we were little and you'd come across those houses that had the full candy bars. It was like legit. Do you remember they tried to scare you every year? They're like, don't take fruit. Razor blades. Oh in my them. god! Back in the when we were kids, yeah, that people would hand out apples and like baked goods and stuff like that too. Sometimes, and you would be like not allowed to eat them. Yeah, and the poison them. The you know um, somebody would. Um, I think there were some places where you could go to the fire station, and then they would look through your candy and make sure you didn't have any razor blades in your candy. I have one kid like <laughs> somewhere. I mean, maybe I, we assume it happened. I have no idea. Oh well, yeah, that was and we a- talked about. Uh, we had some parents come over, and they were talking about yards being TP. And I was like, it's so funny. You just don't see that anymore. They used to happen all the time growing up. Oh my gosh, my older sister used to TP um, her now husband's yard for football games, and oh my god, they would do all. I mean, it was a common thing. Yeah, TPing. We only did that once, I think, in high school. I think we did that to somebody's yard recently, my sisters and I. I mean, like, meaning, huh? like, as adults, we've done it. Do I don't remember who we did it to. As I adults, can't remember. you did it? Yeah, as adults, we did it. Like, define adults. I mean, adults. it was a joke. It was a good joke. It wasn't, like, a bad joke. Like, like define adult. Joke. I get it over 18, but Like, how? married to you, adult. Oh, my word. <laughs> really? I don't remember I that at all. I feel like we did. I'm going to have to ask them, because they always have better, way better memories than I do. Yeah, wow. Um, but yeah, nobody does that anymore. No, I don't that know. They're afraid to waste the once. toilet paper now for sure. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know how much that's worth? Back in the day. Why don't you guys do that anymore, Harrison, when you were in high school? I, I, I egg houses. Well, that's egg houses? Eggs is different that's than different. toilet paper. Toilet, what, that's property damage. If you DP'd a house, you threw the toilet paper rolls up over the trees. You just go and, and start throwing them in the trees. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, and yeah. it was so cool. You could always tell, like, who was going to have a football game that night or like, you know, it was like sectionals or regionals or whatever. Oh my God though. It takes forever to come down. It's, ugh. So it was, I wonder why people don't do that anymore as a form of uh, probably got, I don't know. Who knows? It's full of, it, it, you know, the way people communicate now is so different. Yeah. I'm sure that, you know, it's uh we even think about that now with it. Someone was talking, I mean, I've heard this before, but where people say how, the percentage of 16 year olds actually get their license now so much lower than it was 20 or 30 years ago people just don't get their license eh. right. i mean everybody's connected so i guess to the extent you know back in the day if you weren't physically with someone the only one to the only way to communicate would be over the phone right and um you know so you guys know that in st louis you have to tell a joke before you get your candy on halloween no uh really you have to tell a joke to every door you go what kind to? of joke do you Someone comes to the door and says, what you, you got to tell a she joke. She told this to me, and I said, why? And she was like, well, it's trick or treat. I was like, okay, great, I guess. I know. <laughs> you know what would be a funny joke is you had a mirror, and they go, you got to tell me a joke. You just put the joke on the mirror so they see themselves. <laughs> there's, my, there's my joke. And then she came here, and she was like, you guys don't tell jokes? And I was like, no, babe. We just grab our candy and go. And she was like, interesting. And I was like, yeah. You okay. say trick or treat. I remember The Harrison. person who answers the door says trick or treat. Who did you go with? Was it Casey? Were you guys dressed up in suits? Oh, that was me, Charlotte, Luke. Sydney, and. Oh, no. That was the year you guys dressed up as the four of you guys did. Uh, like 20 in the mob, 20s. That was when we were dressed up as mobsters. No, who, mobsters. Was, who did you go with? I thought there was a guy, another guy that went. It was Scotty. Oh, it was, was it Scotty? Scotty? Yeah. It was okay. it Scotty or was it the neighbor behind no, us? No, it was Scotty. Or maybe, no, I don't, I don't remember. remember. I don't remember. It was either Scotty, Kevin. It was either Scotty or Kevin. Yeah. That was but a great one of He's like that. Um, and Calvin then he went the as, one year they wore the suits, and he went with Luke over in Luke's neighborhood. I didn't, yeah, not, I didn't, was, I didn't um, wear suits in that one. I, I had my morph suit. Or I guess technically. Okay, never mind. Calvin, Calvin was, um, gosh, what was he? What was the name? It starts with an M. He was the guy from Fortnite. Yeah, but what's his name? Midas. 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 Harris, do you have the picture I sent you? Show the picture of him being Midas. <laughs> I remember we were. D- no, because we I sent it to you. I texted it to you. We were spray painting and he kept going, <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> That's because it was a hairspray. It was like hairspray, basically. We were trying to. Basically, you bought gold hairspray. Well, and yeah. so. And yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So then it it was like aerosolized hairspray, like like legit, like Aquanet. Hair, yes, like Aquanet. Yeah. And so I was spraying his face, and then eventually I started just like rubbing it on, like spraying it on my hand, and then like rubbing right. it on his face or whatever. Because his um, hair was black. His hair was black, and he had a gold face. But it was gold Midas, yeah. And so he's one of the characters in Fortnite. So he was super pumped. He looked so cute because he wore his first communion outfit. Which is like a suit, kind yeah. of like with a, um, like a vest. vest and a clip on. And he wore those darn um, first communion. There he is. <laughs> you can't really, you can kind of sort of see his face as a gold 
tint to it. See those sparkles? <laughs> And he, he insisted on wearing glasses and then his hair was black and yeah, he was chilling. He was thinking he was pretty cool as the gold Midas. He did pretty well. So yeah, he ran around. It was his first year really to run around with his cousin who's older than him in the neighborhood and they went everywhere. They got to go a lot of places and then Trevor. Um, oh yeah, Trevor had his thing. Trevor had his golf cart decorated and um, yeah, he was kind of watching him. Hopefully next year will be a little bit better. So Although yeah. it stinks because this year was on a Saturday. Oh, it was perfect because it was on a Saturday. I and mean, last year, I, th- I want to say it was last year, it was freezing. It was like legit snowing outside. I don't remember. It's been a while since we've had a really nice year like that. Yeah, because it was, uh, that was the year that even Cal was like, I'm cold, I want to go home. Yeah. It was just. That was always great when he was like five and he'd be like, yes, let's go home. Let's go home. <laughs> you got so no candy. The weather, yeah, put a damper on them. But li- this, this year was great. Yeah. A lot of people, I noticed, um, a lot of houses weren't participating this year. They had their lights off. A lot of people weren't handing out candy. Yeah. So, anyway, good year. Hopefully next year will be better. So, that's about, uh, yeah. So, funny. Ca- Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you said you had something you wanted to talk about. Oh, with Calvin. As 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 many of you know, we're doing homeschool. And it's funny when we took a trip last week and we took our homeschool stuff with us, which is a mistake. Cause I never do. Homeschool. I always say just, I, I, just I know. for the she record, says now, she's like, just I always don't say, why are you bringing that? We're not going to do it. So, and we don't, we didn't. So at any rate, I get back. So he's had a few days off. He's a little rusty and I'm giving him a problem today. Cause this, um, this curriculum we're using is, uh, sim- very similar to the, something you and I would have done 30 right. years ago. And he had to do word problems. And I, I read the word problem to him and, he had to write the problem down and then figure out what it was. And then it was like, father has 69 cents. Father went to the store and bought, I don't know, a, a pint of milk for 25 cents. How much does he have? And we're sitting there and Calvin goes, he has $2 and 49 cents. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it, was, it was like four of those. And he got like two out of four, right? I had to walk through. I'm like, my God, do you forget everything in four days? <laughs> Uh, and we had one and it was a it was an addition problem we had to carry and he goes he's got three dollars and 19 cents i'm like he starts with like 44 cents and gets a dime <laughs> how does he have three dollars i want some of that action <laughs> uh, so uh God. so anyway we got through that and uh this is fun he's just a mess he just i said where's your ipad because part of math i only got through math this morning before i came up here uh you do flashcards and I've been trying to mix it up. I'll use his iPad and instead of doing flashcards, just cause from addition and addition standpoint, it's mixes it up a little bit. And of course his iPad is on the floor in the basement dead. And I go, dude, we can't start this again. This is, this is a new iPad. You, if it goes dead, you have to plug it up. And he looked at me and like, really? Oh, really? that's a thing. So, so anyway, we're, we're charging that. And, uh, he's a mess. Oh, and he said, He's sitting there in the chair because I did it in because the boys, the older boys, were cooking breakfast upstairs. So I went to the basement at the bar, and we were doing it. And Calvin's got in one of those bar chairs, and he is has two blankets on him. He goes, "Dad, <laughs> this chair is so comfortable." <laughs> like, great. I need you add sixty nine and forty four. Can you do that for me? <laughs> great. Comfort notwithstanding. Do, do you want to tell the God bless you story? Oh yes, show the picture of him with his cookie and his shirt Harrison you have that one don't you so everybody knows that listens to this podcast this child has got a sweet tooth unlike Good any Lord. other like and okay <laughs> <laughs> that's not, Wait, a not picture. that one show him the other one Harrison um there was like a portrait view I took a couple of them but whatever anyway no, so he one. he has there we go yeah, that's good. um and see so he's got a shirt that has cookie and milk on it and he was like Comes upstairs. This is one story. I'll tell you the other one in a second. But comes upstairs and is like, hey, will you save me some of those cookies that the boys won't eat? Because he already ate his dinner, so he was allowed to have his three cookies. And he, but he was convinced that the other kids would leave cookies behind so that he could have even more. Right. Meanwhile, he had had one, because I'm such a sucker and I can't say no, before he went to CVS, which is the story I'm about ready to tell you. And so then he had already had one then, and then he came back and had his dinner and then ate three more cookies and then was stealing some more in that picture. Um, and so I was like, it's so appropriate because you're wearing your cookie shirt and you're stealing cookies. Um, but he went to CVS yesterday because this is a new thing for him. He's now old enough to go to CVS, which is right around the corner in right. our neighborhood. And um, 
He can go by himself. He wears his helmet, his bike, you know, puts on his mask, right. whatever, goes to CVS. <clears throat> and I gave him, he had $5 left with his money. And so he's like, I'm going to go to CVS and buy some gum. Oh, and he said, can I go get three things of gum? Three things like, of gum. No, and you I was get like, one. Get one thing of gum. And I said, you can get a Kit Kat. That's fine. You know, right. if you want a Kit Kat. So, um, so he, I told him, I said, get mom something outside before I, I sent him off. I said, go get you have six dollars right buy so mom go. something was it six dollars he had because yeah. so we had six dollars and so he drives up there and he comes back and you know he goes up in a timely manner comes back gets to the door comes in the door and he's like you are never gonna believe this and he goes something so nice just happened you're just never gonna believe it and i was yeah. like what what happened and he goes it's just so nice and i said what and he goes well i got first i got two gums and two king size kit kats and i was like okay and then he goes you're never gonna believe what was so nice though and i said what and he goes when i was checking out i had my money i had six dollars and i got up there and i gave the guy the things i was buying and he said it's six dollars and 45 cents and and the guy you know gave, i didn't have the extra 45 cents he just gave me another dollar and let me just buy everything and i go you could have put something back and he goes well, the guy, he just, he gave me the dollar. It was just the nicest thing. The cashier. And, the is. cashier, yeah. yeah. Gave me a dollar from his own pocket. And I was like, okay, that was really nice, but you could have put something back. And he's like, yeah. I go, well, what did you say to him? Did you thank him for doing that? And he goes, you know, he goes, what I said was, God bless you, man. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, only you would think of that to say. <laughs> God bless you, man. God bless you. I was like, how about putting something back so the man doesn't have to use his own dollar? It's not like he's giving you, a, you know, giving you food or something. Oh, my God. Some calories. You're buying I sweets. Just, I could not. I could totally see laughing. Calvin, though, you know, although he does look a little ragged sometimes. So I'm sure that the poor guy God had pity on him. Man. God, God bless, bless you, man. God bless you. It's as if he's like some like something out of a on Dickens the side novel. of the road right. needing like milk or something. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, another, another serving of porridge. He's uh, never short on stories with Calvin. Oh my God! He's he's also he's taken to. At night we have this thing where um, he and I will go down and watch funny videos on on YouTube, and he likes these funny cat videos. Oh my God, they're hilarious! And though. he starts this belly like he just thinks they're hysterical. And Mom is upstairs. She goes, "I just love listening to him laugh because he's down there." And what did I tell you? Told me last night. So hard. He goes and he finishes. Oh yeah, he's he like, goes, breathing. Heavy, he goes, oh, "I'm laughed out, Dad. I'm laughed out." <laughs> I've got tears. <laughs> I'm laughed out. I need to go. I need to go watch a show with mom. I'm laughed out. Yeah, he goes, I need to go. I want to go get mom. Because I kept saying, lay down and go to sleep. Because he'll fall asleep in the basement sometimes, and I'll carry him up to his bed. Yeah. And uh, and he, he looks at me. He goes, I want to get mom's bed. I said, is it more comfortable in mom's bed? He goes, yeah, it's more comfortable. So yep. he wanted to do that. So he he's out, uh, and he's getting so darn big. Yep. You just carrying him to his bed now is it's like a sack Hard of potatoes. Work. It's like 60 pounds. So, yeah, he's always uh, – Always adds a, a lot of, um, you know, laughter and stuff to, to what we do. So he, he does have – it's fascinating, though, to see his take on the world or his take on things, his understanding of things. He always has funny quips and, and things like that to, as he observes things. And then we have <clears throat> the other boys who always provide entertainment. Johnny. Lots of entertainment. Johnny, who sends a text over the weekend oh my God. to us. That he doesn't says, listen to this, Johnny hopefully. Is, I think, Harrison, Johnny has read the Crucial Conversations book because he starts his text with, I know you're going to be disappointed in me. <laughs> and so I am finishing trimester grades and. No, I don't think he, he, it was. I have. Tell from the I very beginning. just, I need to, I need you to ground me for two weeks and take away my games or something like that because i got two c pluses so far now i have finals coming so so then he kind of squeezes in a little bit of hope in there in that message so he leads with the disappointment no, okay no this is the first squeezes sentence. in a little bit of hope and then has a resolution to the problem I so said, so okay so you guys both will not be happy with my first trimester <laughs> grades you'll be disappointed in me and i'm disappointed in myself <laughs> There you I go. I think I should be grounded and have my games taken away for a week or two <laughs> so I can get back on track. I'm not failing any classes, and I have been studying for all my finals, so they should go up. And I'm like, what are they? And he goes, and he told me. And then he followed up Friday with, I went to confession today at lunch. I convinced <laughs> a lot of boys to come, LOL. <laughs> he is something else right now. And I go, what are your grades? And he told me. I was like, that ain't that bad. We can pull that out. And 
<laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Good Lord. So I just was laughing because I had just listened to one of the podcasts from Craig Rochelle on Leadership Podcast where it was like, yeah. what do you want them to know? What do you want them to feel? What do you want them to do? And I was like, wow, he just hammered all of those things right, know, right there. I'm like, he has learned crucial conversations in a nutshell. Yeah. I was like, Although I will say Johnny, though, is very self-aware in that regard oh yeah i mean he's very i mean even though he's a young teenager and well he doesn't want us to be disappointed he doesn't want exhibits all the young teenager qualities of a a young boy a a young man i should say um he is still very thoughtful of those kinds of things yeah i mean he knows and and and, you know to be credit to his older brothers i mean you guys did so well i'm sure he has um a little pressure yeah a little pressure to, to continue to do well and 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 live up to his potential so yeah so yeah so that was pretty. We laugh about laughing. it, but it could be a lot so, worse. Yeah, it could be. Absolutely. Take away my games. Right. I was like, son, I don't operate that way. Yeah. You I'll have take to your figure stuff out, away. You, figure it out, you buddy. Figure, figure out how to survive with the distractions. I told him. It's so funny, too, because, I mean, grades are just, they're, it's math. It's just a number, number, number. Oh, he just Spanish. And then Harrison comes in and he's like, how on earth do you have a Z plus in Mr. Wagner's Spanish class? Yeah. <laughs> so. I yeah. had a teacher like that, actually. It's funny. Harrison mentioned that. Because my grades in, in high school were not good, and uh, but I took a Spanish class once, and um, it was Mr. Travis, and he would give the test to you, and let you look at it for 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> you give the test back, <laughs> and then you took the test. I still did bad. Oh my gosh! I never got into that stuff. So anyway, I always think it's funny when you start to talk to them because they know your history or whatever with your grades, and then right. they're like, "Okay, Richard," or "Okay, Reg." That's what Holden always says. Mr. Yeah, whatever. Gosh. <laughs> Mr. So and so. So and he goes, What did he do last night? Because he, Holden ran a marathon yesterday mm-hmm. with his buddies. Because that's what you do. That's what you do on a Sunday. And I just like go fun. run a marathon. Yeah. So he comes out and he keeps coming out and talking in the room. He, and we were messing with him. He goes, Oh, stop. I'm sore. I'm sore. I'm like, You ran a marathon. What are you doing out here? Go right. go sit in your bed. <laughs> right. It's like, You're sore. Get out of here. Oh, so uh, gosh. he's funny. He's a right. He was funny because he comes in and he's like, do you go, and you're like, do you go to church? And he's like, yeah, I went to Evelyn. And then he razzed him for something. He's like, well, Richard, at least I went to church. I'm like, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I'll picture this. He's got this he's got blue, this t-shirt, blue on, t-shirt on, cut off sweatpants into shorts, house slippers. house slippers. And I'm like, wow. I was like, Evelyn, I'm sure it was real pleased you dressed up. <laughs> I mean, you can't dress down much more than that unless yes, you're in a row. Yes, and that's when he said, well, at least I went to church. So, it's funny. He's a riot. I mean, they keep us – he's always so funny. He's uh, always has something funny to say. He's uh, he's hysterical. Now, hats off, though. I mean, I razz him, but he, he's exactly right. At least he went to church. I didn't, you know, yeah. it's more than I, I did yesterday. So, uh Trevor was funny last night coming in with his blue gloves. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> slapping his gloves. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, but he came in last night, Harrison, and he shaved. I didn't get to see him this morning. Did you see him this morning? Uh, yeah, briefly. Did he shave? He only shaved one section of his beard. This part right here, Harrison Branch. Right here, look. Right here. Right this part. Right here. He goes, I just had to. And I go, well, what did you do with the... He goes, I didn't shave anything else. So I have no idea what he looks like. <laughs> he's only shaved this part, I think, right here. So when he comes home today, he's going to look hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Change his last name to Yoder. <laughs> So Trevor is trying to do No Shave November with Harrison. And right. Harrison's convinced him that he's going to do it, so he's doing it. And Harrison is the only reason this child is doing this. Yeah, he doesn't like because of Harrison. He never not, doesn't shave. So he, because he's so, like, meticulous. Right. And so he can't stand it, that it's itchy. Even though Harrison's explained that this is a phase, it'll get over you being It's itchy. bad, though. I can't stand it. And so um, last night he came in, he's like, because, you see, I had to just shave this part right here. So I have no idea what he's going to look like. Tonight, when if I he get just home. did that, it's gonna look ridiculous. So I said, "Well, he doesn't have a thick beard as I thought he'd have." Oh, I bet it does. In another two weeks. Yeah, but he's been growing it for how long? Just it take a you week. To grow a beard? Two weeks? Has he been? Has it been two weeks, Harrison? I mean, it's, it's been, been around there, but usually the best way for it to grow is you 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 sh- you shave it like a few times, and then you let it grow. But you let, so you let it grow out fully. You shave it all the way down, and then you let it grow again. Shave it all the way down, and then you, eventually it'll get to like be really full. If if you have hmm, that type really. of facial hair, really shave down. down. You mean like shave it clean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know what it is, but apparently it just grows back more full. Was it last year we did it? Was it no shave November? It was yeah. like it was last year. Yeah. 
Was it a January? I can't remember. Why did that get started <clears throat> anyway? Was that Burt Kreischer know. or something Something with him? No, that he did Silver October with oh. Rogan and all those guys. But we did. Anyway, the reason I, I say that is I went, gosh, six weeks without shaving. Yeah, we have a picture of you. It was bad. It looks ridiculous. It doesn't yeah. look good. I'm not meant to have a beard. Do you remember that picture we have him in the office, Harrison? <laughs> it looks dumb. <laughs> Oh, and we gosh. got out on every game. We got out on Saturday morning, and and I was and I went and you know gave Emily a kiss, and she goes, "I've I've played, I've 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 been a good sport. You go shave that off." <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Oh gosh. And it's weird. It is weird though, because you yeah, it's weird how how people have different beards like that. You know, different whatever. Some people have great beards, not so much. It's other people, not so much. I had a buddy in high school. It's a true story. He had to shave like twice a day. Oh, wow. I mean, he would have, like, 5 o'clock shadow, legit. Yeah. He'd shave in the morning, and then the hairiest guy I've ever known. <laughs> I remember one time he was shaving, and he didn't know what he was doing. He hacked his face. Oh, my <laughs> god! His mother was like, what are you doing? That's horrible. Yeah, it's uh, both he and his brother are both like that. Lots so, and lots and lots, so, yeah. So, yeah, ready for Thanksgiving now. Yeah, Thanksgiving. It's gonna be a different Thanksgiving. Not a lot of people coming around. I mean, not not as unlike before. People aren't getting together. Oh, oh my God. God, that's hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> say foldable table. Oh my God, well, that that was two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, the probably. foldable table. Way too many times during this. Yeah, I that say was foldable the first table. quarter. I say foldable table. Foldable table. That was hilarious. Where do I find that foldable table? That was so That was one funny. of your first videos. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. That's hilarious. That's so bad. Oh, my gosh. No shave November. I can't believe I did that. The problem was that dad didn't, we didn't, I didn't talk to him about like trimming it or shaping it or anything. So he just kind of let it grow out. And that's when you go like, that's when you, like if you trimmed it right there, it probably would have looked good. You know, I wouldn't have. Uh, I know better than the. Yeah, that was so funny. When you were like, I'm going to go look for it. <laughs> oh, oh, that was gosh. yeah, that was, that was one of your first videos. Yeah. That was when we were doing When did we do the the remember the bean challenge? What was the name of that? The jelly bean? What was the name of that, Harrison? You couldn't figure out the freaking door handles. <laughs> Harrison versus the <laughs> That was hilarious. Hey, speaking of anybody listening, if you haven't checked out Mythbusters online, you got to check out Mythbusters. Oh yeah, that's a great video. It is so funny and clever, and yeah, uh, Duckwall, Duckwall did a great job. and Harrison do a great job. Of the editing's fantastic it's, on that um, episode. It so. is, you know, I'll, I'll say, you know, I'll brag on Harrison a lot, but I watched that video. And I was like, this is something you'd see on television. Yeah, Duckwall. I does mean, it's a really fantastic good. Fantastic job. So. If you haven't checked out MythBusters, and she gives some very informative information, but in a very fun way. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, everything. I, I look at those videos, and it's and it. I mean, again, Toot and Harrison's horn, but it's head and shoulders above anything that I see. Yeah. And he's kind of like, honestly, even I mean, legit YouTube videos that I see for for other places. <laughs> They're just so funny. I just laugh every time I watch it. It's really cute. very very entertaining content. So yeah, so hats off to you guys for doing such a great job, and the staff members that participated, all that. Everybody's such always such a good sport, and I think that goes to the the notion that, I mean, content doesn't have to be boring. Even in this, you know, so, so many veterinary videos you see can be kind of uh, they're not nearly as entertaining as they could be. Oh yeah. So sure. I mean, and these are those are fantastic. So hats off to everybody who does such a great job, and they're informative. I mean, they're That's entertaining and informative. Yeah, exactly. And I think what happens a lot of times with videos is. Um, you lose the message because the nature of the content it, it's it's not engaging enough, and if if it's in, people are just gonna stop watching even if they want to know. There are videos that I've watched that I wanted to watch because I want to learn about this that or the other, but it's just so bad. Right. Like I don't, or it takes too long, or I find myself. I, we were talking about this this weekend about a trimming a video down, and I think um, that does happen because people get impatient. You're like, I want to know how to build a deck, but I don't want to watch it. 30 minute video right i mean get to it in four minutes or something you know and then maybe link to another video that's longer or something uh, Lowe's does a really good job of that all their videos are like three or four minutes mm -hmm. and they'll link to a, a, a video an additional video that has more detail right so they've got it dialed in um you would expect they would right but um but yeah i always i always try and look at my what i do and i think if i do it this way then other people have to have the same preferences or or observations or whatever so well, hopefully we'll have something for Thanksgiving. Hopefully we'll put together something for Thanksgiving, yeah. video-wise. 
be good. A lot to be thankful for this year. Yep. Lots, lots, lots. Um, hoping that 2021 is better than 2020. I can't imagine it could be worse <laughs> in terms of events and whatnot. So we'll see. I'm always uh, ever the optimist. So whenever, well, whenever yeah. things are, yeah. So I'm prepared for it to be a rolling 2020, like into 2021. What do you mean? I feel like it's like a, just a rolling evolving, like shit show for Whoa. two to three years. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I mean, I think it's just going to roll around. And then, like... What do you mean? What, and what, what like, event? I just think it's going to roll from one thing to the next thing. And it's going to be, like, this gap of two to three years of of shittiness. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> just saying what it is. And then it'll all go... Then that'll all go away. It's just going to be, like, this period of time in, in history. And then it'll go back to being more normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take two to three. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not loving that. I'm loving that dad's reaction to him. I don't care. Dad's gonna be like, whoa. <laughs> Meanwhile, he drops f bombs every two seconds. No, not on air. I don't. Well, not on air, but off air, you're someone else. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I agree. I think. I think. So this, I think it, it's not like 2020 is gonna end and it's gonna be okay. It's gonna just. It's gonna evolve over three years. Like it's gonna be a three year stint. I do think this, and I, I do think. Um, I didn't come up with this. I mean, it, it, do you also I think it's going to be shitty or do, do I think? Yeah, I think so. Oh, but do you uh, think it's going to be shitty though? Yeah, <laughs> I would use a, a, a I would use a, a different, uh, you yeah. oh, um, know. So anyway, uh, I think that I think 2020 is ushering in things that were probably already happening, but they're going to be at such an accelerated pace that it's going to be very disruptive. And I don't think people, I just personally don't think people fully appreciate how disruptive it's going to be. It depending on where you're at and what industry you're in and all that stuff. I think the big cities are in for a world of hurt. Yeah. I don't. Th I think people are leaving at such a rate that I don't think I for sure they don't understand what's going. They don't at least publicly. I don't think fully appreciate what's going to happen from a tax base standpoint. Well, their policies would suggest they understand what's going to happen. Well, the policies it was kind of like Detroit because they're Those, because they're dinging people for leaving their cities. Well, no, I know that, but I'm saying those cities are, are based upon a model of ever increasing things like population or tax base. Well, what happens? I mean, what happens if 10% of your population goes away and you can tax people? I mean, the only way to make up the difference is either to cut services or increases everybody's taxes by 30%. That's not going to work. So what do you do? I mean, and there's a guy that was talking, there's a guy that I, that I, I follow and he's talked a lot about these trends and, and he suggests, he's like, I don't think people fully understand what's, what this is going to, um, portend for the future for some of those areas. Yeah. Even nationally, I think, you know, the whole work from home thing, I don't think that's going away. I mean, not in the way, I don't think it'll ever go back to the way it was. Yeah. I think that they are, oh, companies, the companies are have seen way too much gain from their, yeah, they're positioning themselves right. and people in this guy was talking about it and he said, you know, people have said, well, how do you know someone's getting their work done? He goes, think about the productivity that's gained by the people who are already doing their work and the, the, the people who weren't or the laggards kind of being forced out and you're putting that production on the productive people. Right. Because you can cut. And um, he said, uh, and that also goes to like a gig effect too, like a gig economy effect where you have people, you could, you could be talking independent contractors writ large that they'll come in and just do this part of the job, but you're not right. technically an employee, but you can live wherever you want. Right. Um, you know, the commercial real estate effect and all that stuff. And I had a point, and I can't remember what it was now about that. Um, well, just that it's going to be changing the landscape, but I don't think that it ever, I think that people, you know, in the very beginning of 2020 were like, this is the new normal. And I think that people mistook that for like the masks and those kinds of things. Like, I think all of that will go away eventually, but like the new normal being like the way businesses are run, the right. way, you know, um, uh, people interact with one another the way you know like all of that yeah i think that that's been changed and shifted potentially forever well and i think they were talking about the 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 coastal mostly like west coast tech companies and how people i never thought about this but he said people because of the work from home they're actually moving out of those areas like san francisco yeah they don't Bay have area. to live there but yeah. he said also the companies are going in saying you can do that but we're going to cut your pay by 10 percent, 20 percent and people are like great no problem because it's cheap. I, he goes, there are people it's out there that are making more money, even with a yeah. pay cut, yeah. taking that. He goes, so 
from a business, he goes, you have a vested interest in making sure, I mean, cutting obviously labor costs, because that's one of the largest, I'm sure, expenses for most businesses, right. us, you know. Um, it'll change everything. And where and he, he actually gave a concrete example. He didn't give the guy's name because he said he didn't want to, he thought people would figure out who it was. And it was a brokerage firm or something like that based in and around, in or around Chicago. And the guy said that technically they were supposed to come back to office, full office staff on next June, 2021. But behind the scenes, they've been planning to not go back to that at all. To basically say, if you live within a three or four hour radius of the office, such that you can come in twice a month, right? That's all we need you to do. And he goes, you could live as far south as Texas yeah. and work for this company in Chicago. He goes, that's going to change everything. And I mean, also real estate prices in some of these areas where they're like, I don't have to live here. I can live where I can live other places, right? Um, outside of those those high density areas. I think that's just one effect. I think you'll have. Um, I mean, the homeschooling effect, I think, is big. What that does to, you know, public schools and, and all that. I mean, I think there's a lot of things, I think, that are coming that people don't quite fully grasp. Yeah. To the extent that's a new normal, I, I agree with you. I think that it's going to a normal that we don't, that people, a lot of people don't quite understand just yet. I mean, because they can't. It hasn't quite happened. But it's still really early. I don't think you'll see a lot of that stuff until probably mid-year next year right mid to late year and i mean the second half of 21 i think is probably when you'll see a lot of these things because at that point you'll have like for public schools or you know or even universities you'll see you'll have a full year of impact to say what what do we do going forward i think in, i think universities is going to be even bigger yeah i, I think agree. it's it's not it, it it's not good to be i would think it'd be very it's going to be very tough for like the websters and the going forward because people are going to say, I can, if I'm going to be on a Zoom call, I'm not paying. Right. I'm not paying full price for a Zoom call. Sorry. Right. And not to mention the other things, the quarantining, all this other, you know, and that's what, if I, I, I a long term, I think that was probably already happening. There was a guy, I didn't realize this. He said that um, college enrollment has been on an eight year slide, and he had a graph that showed enrollment. It's actually been going down for eight years. And he said, that's, I mean, this is only going to accelerate, not enrollment, but, the traditional brick and mortar delivery right. of that service of the college experience, whatever you want to call it. Cause kids now, now that you have a taste of this and you say, I can do a zoom call. I can do it. I don't need to go sit in a class. And I think one thing that thing people haven't talked about yet that I've thought about before in the past, just watching my kids, how they consume content, pick up knowledge and things like that. Um, it's all via video and it's all, it's all content you consume when you want to consume it. Right. So why go sit in a classroom three hours a week when I can sit down on a weekend and take three weeks worth of classes over the weekend. I yep. mean, I think that's the biggest thing because I think from a, a delivery of uh, a service delivery standpoint, that's huge because if you could take, I mean, you and I remember this. I mean, if I remember having classes like one class a day, sometimes you have right. to drive, get up, go to campus, go to class. I mean, it's, three or four hours to go right. take one class. Right. Whereas you can do all that, a 50 minute class watching it. And there's so many classes that I had in college for sure at UT. I never talked to the professor. I went there and took notes and left. Right. I mean, there's no difference between me watching per somebody live or watching a video feed of it or feed or pre-recorded. Right. And I think the big thing you'll see is if you see some of the big names like the Purdue's that I use, if they start, and I think they've already done this, they already offer an online accredited program. That's just going to get bigger. Yeah. Even watching Holden, who's looking at colleges, I'm like, dude, if you could do this in three, two and a half, three years versus four, do it. Right. For cheaper. Because you have that's a year or a year and a half you have on your peers. Yeah. Getting out, lot and you know, opportunity costs aren't aren't there as much as before as a four year being locked in for four years. So I think a lot of changes are coming. I don't think people quite understand it. Um, yeah, we'll see. I think, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Yeah, I mean. What happens? A yep. lot of the minimum wage. We were talking to the kids about the minimum wage this weekend. Mm -hmm. The effects of that and how that pushes a lot of uh, drive for capital investment to non-human labor sources. Right. I mean, I mean, to the extent that that continues to, to be enacted in state after state. Florida just enacted that or just voted that in, the $15 an hour minimum wage. So. We'll see what happens. I think a lot of changes are coming. I think I would tell people, I mean, if they were to ask, I would say just be nimble, be able to be reactive to events and be proactive to the extent that you can be. See those trends coming. So.
talked a lot there. It's a bit of a Richie ramble. Pearls of wisdom from Richie King. <laughs> no, but I do think, and I've always, and I've said this before to other people, I do think whenever there is adversity, there's always a nugget of opportunity somewhere. So look at it. Jocko Willink's got a great video, the good video. And he said, you know, no matter the, the adversity or the, or, or the, the problem at hand, there's always an opportunity there to view it, at least from an attitudinal standpoint. Yep. To say, you know, look at the positive in this, not necessarily the negative. Sometimes it's tough to find it. Yep. But it um, sometimes. I do think, though, I mean, the last example I'll think of, so COVID thing, we're talking about this with McDonald's. Uh, and there was a guy, actually, who, whose brother or brother-in-law owns a lot of franchises somewhere in the U.S. And he goes, they're all getting rid of their dining rooms. It's all going to be kiosks. They're going to have basically, it's going to be like food courts, basically. Mm-hmm. You, just, well, you can walk in and get your food, but then you can't eat there. And I thought, and he goes, that'll reduce their real estate footprint and everything. Wow. Yeah. He goes, and that's why they started to go into the kiosks. because. Bad. Oh, that's the good video. <laughs> Jocko Wilnick video. Yeah. Though it's fascinating that you watch that and you think, and I remember years ago they were talking about, not years, a few years ago, when all this fight for 15 and all that stuff started to happen. They said, what this is going to do is force them into further automation. So instead of somebody flipping, they're looking at basically machines that'll cook your burger and everything. You can go up to a kiosk and go, I want this, I want to cook this way, I want these. And a couple minutes later, it slides out and it's, there's no human back there. It all grinds it. It's well, you're still going to need people to operate the machinery <clears throat> and take care of the machinery when it comes offline because that was always the big fear with manufacturing and right. using robots for manufacturing. And, you know, the, the thing is you still need people to understand how those robots work, how you get them back online when they come offline. Like, no, so it, it just about, changes. It, the, well, but think about it, like, from a headcount standpoint. From oh, a I agree. I mean, you, you may have less people for sure. but that, That's where I think where people – yeah, but think, I, I think the broader – thing that i think about is the displacement of employees at that point if mm-hmm. you take say take an industry and you cut the head count by 80 percent well those 80 that 80 percent's got to go find gainful employment somewhere right or so i mean those are the trends that i don't think i mean as you go to more, toward more automation or self-driving cars trucks whatever what does that do to the broader economy right from an unemployment standpoint and i think that's where these people come back in and they say over time, the creative destruction aspect of the economy is such that, you know, historically, if you're displaced in this and you'll find another industry to go to work in and they're worried that automation will there won't be other other industries to go into. Right. In sufficient numbers to employ those people. So what do you do? I mean, I think that's what the, what the fear is. I mean, how do you address that? And that's where the whole UBI, all this stuff comes in, um, that argument. So it's fascinating. It's fascinating. So it a is. lot of changes coming. There's something else that we were talking about the other day, and I was like, I, the kids were talking about it. I was like, that's a big deal. I can't think of it right now. You don't remember? No, it was self-driving trucks or something. Oh, we were talking about that last night, I guess. We were talking about self-driving trucks because we were traveling this weekend and all the trucks that we saw, and then Madeline was talking about the truck tire blowing next to her and scaring her half to death, and I said... <laughs> And I said, that's, and I said, this self-driving technology, there's a guy, uh, Mike Shedlock, he has a website called Mish's Global, and he's a financial, you know, guy, and he writes articles all the time. And he talked about that a couple years ago, or maybe it was last year. He said that that's coming, and he said, people don't quite understand the full effect of that, where you don't have a human, you don't have a human behind the truck because they've got the tech, not tech dialed in where you can have a driverless truck go from, say, Knoxville, Tennessee to Indianapolis, and then somebody grabs it in Indianapolis and takes it where it needs to go. Right. But you can go hub to hub all day long. Right. And it actually leads to fewer trucks because you can have trucks go a lot longer because they're self-driving. Mm-hmm. First. So, so what does that do to the displacement of workers at that point? Because now you have to have a human behind the wheel of every – that transportation system's huge. Yes, it is. So, And self-driving <laughs> tech, you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, Mom's over there. She's in. She's in mom mode. Mm-hmm. Great. Great. <laughs> really? <laughs> Waiting for her to start snoring. What? Oh god, no, it's funny. I, that stuff that fascinates me. It's so, as something you can you're tell. passionate about. I get it. No, it's fascinating because you can see these things, and I don't think, and I think too often people think, well, this just happened. It's like, no, it didn't. That's been coming for a while. Right. I mean, the, the, you're just seeing the the end result, the full end result of this, but this has been happening for a while. It's not. Ju- it didn't just. Use those things are just change. So what do you see? I've, I've been talking about what, what changes do you see in, in our business? What do you see quickly? I know that you want to wrap up, but I, <laughs> she's like, I don't have anything to say. 
I have nothing to say. Oh, God. No, I was thinking of a good closing because of – anyway. Okay. Um, your – what do I see for veterinary medicine? Ah, oh, jeez. Who knows? Veterinary medicine is slow to change, and they are dragging their feet, kicking and screaming through this entire thing. Um, but I think that um, – th- Yeah, well – I mean, I think that um, th- an increase in corporate ownership is going to happen. Um, I think that uh, being able to separate ourselves. From- Why are you laughing? Passion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, separating ourselves based on our service. All right. And then our knowledge base and trying harder than everybody else. I think the four things that we decided we were going to differentiate ourselves on as a leadership group will hold strong and true as we move forward. Because I think for other people to do that, it's too time consuming and it's too hard. Right. So I think that we've positioned ourselves to be able to tolerate all of the changes because of who we decided we were going to be. It's, it's, it's so fascinating to read some of these. I read something just yesterday and this person had posted on a board about slowing down business. I'd, I'd mentioned that earlier and they said they had not accepted a new client in two years. Yeah. I was like, are you, you're joking, right? Those people are going somewhere. It's yeah. fascinating. I, I think actually, to your point about corporate ownership, I think that that'll be the catalyst that drives innovation going forward. Because I think right now you have so much decentralization in the industry that if you have 10 players, large players, there's, you know, if we add something that, that decreases a certain cost by a certain amount, it's not that big a deal. But if you do that times a thousand hospitals, that's a real big deal. Right. And I think that's what you'll need to see. You'll need to see that kind of centralization of the industry, that kind of tipping point. And then I think you'll see a lot of changes, whether it be, I don't know, it'll, it'll, it'll be slower than human medicine, but I could totally see something like they've talked about anesthesia machines where it's AI that controls that remote surgeries. You could have a surgeon here that does, you know, you mm-hmm. could have all kinds of things. Right. I mean, to reduce that, you're charging the same, but right. you have a, a surgeon in Indiana doing surgery in te- Tennessee. Right. I mean, I could totally see something like that. So. It'll be fascinating to watch. Yeah. And how that delivery service, I think too, you know, one last thing is I think that the COVID's shown you, you can do things very differently if you have to. They're oh, possible. Yeah. It's possible to do things very differently, telemedicine, things like that, that were kind of on the very much on the fringe before. Now, not so much. People become accustomed to it and um, we'll see what happens. No, I agree. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be fun. It changes. Yeah, lots of good things. Lots of good things coming. So. OK, that's it. Well, we'll wrap up there with Richie's rant. <laughs> it's not a rant. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Richie's review on what's coming for 2021, which we'll revisit at the end of 2020. We so, will. because then we're going to have to make some predictions and play oh, some Lord. numbers. So, we got to play that game because that's right. kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and I think we might have done that in, tw- didn't we, Harrison? I think we have to go back and look at 2019 and see what we did because we did make predictions. No, oh, they're all blown. So, yeah, who knows? They're all blown. Um, it'll be interesting to go back and I'm sure. replay that. Um, <sighs> so, so, yes, thank you everybody for joining us on this episode of Five Boys in a Business. And we're here most Mondays around 1030 or 11. You can check us out on any of the podcast channels. Don't forget to check out the merch store, ASVCMerch.com. I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. And we'll see you next time. We're out.